I don't have to be careful. Why am I thinking as if feelings are so set in stone? They disappear in like a second. Hello there and welcome to this week's video. This is the last video of 2022. And I was gonna do resolutions and habits and all that, but I thought, wait, actually, I have a much cooler thing that we can take into 2023. And that's the concept of emotional recklessness that I've been trying out for like, more than two months. It's been really freeing and really expensive. So I think it's something so great to take further into 2023. And maybe for some of you, you know, just started out in 2023. And I'm gonna be going into how I came up with it, uh, what's the logic behind it, even though it's something emotional, and also, you know, little ways that I use it in everyday life, because it's an everyday thing. But first, for those of you who want to close the video, I really want you to get this message, so I will just say it. Emotional recklessness is Basically, not caring about your own feelings and saying screw you feelings and <laughs> going and doing whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, that's emotional recklessness. You can close the video if you want. But now, let's go into the deeper stuff. Let's start with how I came up with this. I have been working with my ego for some time now trying to make it smaller so that I can become more myself, you know, be freer. And I've been going about it in a calm manner, you know, patiently, kind of like holding my own hand through it. And at some point I was like, wait, maybe holding my hand through it is not the best option. It may be better to face myself at my own level like the emotional level where i am we've all heard of the what's it called the grief the stages of grief denial anger bargaining whatever there's a scale right and i think there's also some kind of emotional scale for other you know emotions like that make you feel good or make you feel bad and if i am facing my ego in and kind of like pretending that the ego is at this level that the ego is reasonable <laughs> you know they are at the bargaining stage and not at the denial stage you know what i mean maybe that's not the best way because you know there's a gap there so i thought okay maybe i'll try to meet my ego where it is at and I found that my ego is not at a very reasonable place. <laughs> it's kind of like imagining that there is me and there's my ego and we're talking. It seems like I say something to the ego such as, oh, ego, I want to move to another country. <laughs> and the ego is like, are you kidding me? That is so difficult. That is so expensive. That is so uh, scary. We cannot do that. You're staying here and there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot reason with that. The ego is scared and the ego is freaking out. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna go and say, screw you, ego, and I will do the things that I want to do anyway. And that's kind of how it came up, this concept of emotional recklessness. And it's emotional recklessness because the ego is trying to protect my feelings. The ego doesn't want me to feel like I was rejected, doesn't want me to feel bad in any way, just wants me to stay in my comfort zone. Also, emotional recklessness is kind of related to emotional sovereignty. Because I know what kind of thoughts and feelings are going through me at this point in my life. And I don't have to be careful with my feelings. I've been fine my whole life. There's lows and there's highs, but I've always made it through. And so I can make it through. I know I have the tools and I know I can pull myself through whatever emotional thing comes up. I trust in myself enough. Having this knowledge of what's going on with me and having the knowledge of what I can do to shift my emotional state because I am emotionally sovereign, 
I don't have to be careful. Like, why am I worrying about feeling a certain way? Why am I thinking as if feelings are so set in stone? They disappear in like a second. You know, I don't have to worry about feeling disappointed after I do something because that disappointment, I can make it go away. And it goes away actually on its own, even if I don't do anything. So why am I being so emotionally careful? Why was I being so emotionally careful? It's time to be emotionally reckless. Right now, I would add that it's not physical recklessness. You know, I'm not gonna be, it's not about bungee jumping. It's not a recklessness with other people's feelings. It's just about my own feelings, okay? <laughs> so in practice, what does emotional recklessness look like? So I kind of moved to Denmark around two months ago. You may know or you may not know. It's the reason why my plant is dying. And that was already a result of this emotional recklessness. It's not because it's something that is scary for most people or because it's difficult to move to a new country or something. It, it was only emotionally reckless because I had to deal with what would other people think. That's the thing that was scary to my ego. And the other examples of emotionally reckless things are also things related to what is the ego scared of. And the ego is always scared of external things, like how are we going to be perceived? Are we going to be rejected? Are we not going to be liked? Etc. So going over and talking to a stranger and inviting her to our table even though you don't know her, wearing what you want, regardless of the situation, which is more meaningful than you might expect. Sharing more thoughts on Instagram, going to places alone, doing stuff alone, going along with people who I like and rejecting people who I don't like. It seems simple, but it's not so much. Because many times we kind of hold back on the people that we like because we don't want to be too much. And we try to still tolerate the people who we don't like, you know, both for the sake of being accepted by these people. And I've, I'm doing away with that. I want the people who I like and who I want in my life to know that. And I want the people who I don't want in my life to know that I am not for them. So basically what I'm talking about is all these things that we risk getting rejected or risk not being accepted as much as we want. Going and doing them anyway, that is emotional recklessness. Because you might feel bad after. However, you know that you can go through it and you can move on and you're going to be fine. because. You are you, you know, you have that worth in you. So it's fine. It's fine to be emotionally reckless. And it's so worth it because you are doing the things that you really want to do. You are following your wants. And at least for me, they're only leading me to more and more expensive experiences. And of course, there's a scale. I, I'm not emotionally reckless to the max that I could be. I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> but it's about taking steps that are a little reckless and then a little bit more reckless emotionally. And all of a sudden you're doing things that are just exactly what you wanted to do, but felt so far away, but you were just doing them. So, okay, that's it. That's emotional recklessness. I hope you try it. I hope. I hope you screw your ego and just decide to follow your wants and it's gonna be good, it's gonna be great 2023, we're here for it, I'm so excited. And that's it for today's video, thank you for watching, let me know what you thought in the comments below, I'm really curious. And I'll see you next week and next year, bye!